Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me once again. Well, a couple of days back, I did a video where I reacted to some comments made by Richard Hammond, and he was talking about electric vehicles and the fact that by 2050, we're still going to see what they refer to as ice cars on the road, internal combustion engines. They're still going to be there no matter what. And I reacted to it and I thought, well, yeah, OK. Uh, I kind of agree with his comments if you look at it logically. And I, I tell you a little bit about it from my experience. So what I wanted to do on this video was go through some of your comments because that video attracted a fair bit of attention. And I wanted to air some of your views and your opinions. So here goes. Let's have a look. OK. So, you see the thumbnail of the video there. I'll probably make the thumbnail for this video the same one, so it's identifiable. Martin Reed uh, says, Andy, you were right. In my view, electric cars are unproven and not sustainable and very, very expensive. I cannot afford one or even half of one. Recently, the Mersey Rail was extended from Kirkby to Head Headbolt Lane. About a mile, this part is battery. Cannot think why, as the cost of putting in the electric conductor rail when rebuilt would have been next to nothing. But now they have to maintain at public cost batteries on the trains, which is very unnecessary. It seems to me battery power is being pushed for all the wrong reasons. I mean, they talk about hydrogen fuel cells and that sort of thing, don't they, coming up and the kinds of refined uh, fuels we've got at the moment. Oh. Noel Wallace is always one professional driver. What qualifications you got for that title? CPC, maybe? Class one or two? Anything over and above license? No, I thought not. Uh, I think the same about comments like that, to be honest with you. Look, I don't have qualifications. My only qualification is experience. 13 to 14 years, to be precise. Spent... Many, many an hour, more than most, on Britain's roads, particularly the motorways. I happen to know a thing or two about endurance, cars, and the practicalities of them with the job that I do. And I've been driving 30 years, I think. So I call that my experience. Anyway, Richard, uh, I've only ever been able to afford second-hand cars. I never had much more than a couple of thousand to spend on any vehicle I've ever bought. I've yet to see an electric car in this price range. Neither have I. Neither have I. And, you know, if they do turn up, they've probably got so many miles on them, the battery's not going to last too much longer. There is a company locally that rents taxis, uh, electric hybrid ones out, to cab drivers. I won't name them, but, yeah, not great condition, some of the vehicles. Roger Mitchell, good for you, Andy. Good for me. Uh, Kingfisher Phil, if you want to sweat the assets, you will work more than one shift for 24 hours. So charging time does not really exist or at least coexist with availability to do runs of a decent length. The goons who told our half-wit uh, politicos to go electric were bus-loving, cycle-using tosspots, not people who need, uh, need a workhorse vehicle. Uh, the next one, uh, John Elliott, the problem is uh, that people just see a shiny new car but don't see the bigger picture. The range is one of the biggest problems. Then children dying in clapped mines in Cambodia. Then there's the amount of acid used to extract the materials which seep through to the drinking water. It's an absolute no for me. Plus, the excess huge weight caused by the batteries pushing down on the tyres, this causing microparticles in the atmosphere that we breathe in. So an electric car EV will be a bigger pollutant ever than the ice car. When the facts are recorded in years to come, all this talk in a name to save the planet, I don't think so. Have you also heard about the other big problems with solar panels? Uh, as it appears, recycling has become another big problem. When will this nonsense end? Yeah, I, I knew about the solar panels. It's what happens at end of life. And I've seen pictures of piles of them just dumped. It's uh, not the greatest. Uh, David, I agree with you, but EVs 
will be short term. I've always believed they were only a means to making profit until hydrogen takes off. They are not green and totally useless if you travel a lot or pull a caravan. A carbon footprint to make an EV is much bigger than a normal car. It's just that the fossil fuels are used elsewhere, not in our backyard. Then you cannot dispose of the batteries in a green way. My 46-year-old MG Midget is a green car than an EV car, as everything on it has been recycled. Good case in point right there. Anthony Harper, just look up the McMaster as to why EVAs don't work. Uh, EVs don't work. Uh, Matthew, if you think electric cars are better for the environment, then uh, go look how a Prius is made. Uh, it was the cars I mentioned that the guy rented out earlier, they were actually Priuses, so uh, not great. Everyone wants to deal with bits of the EV problem without sequencing out the waste. The EV is okay, except that there is no battery yet fit for purpose to run it, so stick to battery and forget the rest of it. Lithium batteries can now provide a close to usable range and performance, but are still a low density energy supply that is heavy, expensive, fragile, inconvenient to replenish, and uneconomic to replace in current designs. That's 20 grand for a battery, isn't it? I've read some of the figures. We all have some experience of them. I have a solar powered watch that has a 20 year old battery. I also have much bigger examples for drones, power tools, and electrically assisted bikes, which are unlikely to last more than six years, depending on use. The bikes I can pedal home with a dead battery. If you use a reciprocating petrol engine hard, you may break that engine, but not the fuel tank. Do the same with an electric motor and a battery, and you may damage both. I think these batteries are excellent, but would not touch them as... Attractive power for a family car at any price. Thank you for that. Uh, really great comment. Uh, Bob, excellent points here. Who would have thought that in 2024, common sense would be seen as a rare virtue instead of the default position, not the government, that's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Common sense seems to be out the window these days, doesn't it? Uh, John, Andy, do you need. Uh, you need to look at the work of Tony is at Siba and Rethink X. He made a number of predictions about EVs 10 years ago, and all of them have come to fruition, and some ahead of time as well. He's also made some predictions about taxes, and you might find them quite alarming. All right, I'll check that out. Thank you very much, John. Uh, English CAD, it's happening. No matter how much the people protest, driving will be the preserve of the very rich. The plebs will use public transport and will be grateful. Hmm. Uh, Bobby, if you like electric cars and are fortunate enough to be able to afford one, well, good for you. As for me, I don't and I can't. Have a good day. <laughs> I love your outlook on life, Bobby. Thanks for the comment. Uh, test pilot, I'll only get an electric. Someone else pays for it. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's the cost, isn't it? Uh, before you think of anything else. Uh, too young to be old. There's no such thing as a zero emissions vehicle. You don't eliminate emissions. You export them from somewhere else. It takes £500,000 of materials to make a single £100 battery. You must process £25,000 of brine for the lithium, £30,000 of ore for the cobalt, £5,000 of ore for the nickel and £25,000 of ore for the copper. All told, you dig up £500,000 of the Earth's crust for just one battery, 100 to 300 barrels of oil to manufacture a battery that can hold one barrel of oil of equivalent of energy. That is so much material, isn't it? Just for one battery. Uh, Carol, people forget the pollution created making the bloody things. Absolutely, Carol. Some of the and said that earlier. And the last comment, uh, Akira Tomo. I live in Maidstone, Kent, not far up the road from me, and a lot of the minicab firms are using new Dacia joggers as their vehicles of choice. I've seen a couple of them on the M2, actually, uh, around that area. Uh, it says a lot, doesn't it, about the cost of new cars of that type. I'm in the market for one myself. Okay. Well, there you go, everybody. Uh, some great comments there. Uh, from uh, the subscribers. I appreciate it very much. Always your input. 
I try and do these readout videos as much as I can. Uh, please hit the like button. Uh, if you can, I would appreciate it. That helps YouTube and the algorithm get the video everywhere. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and share this on your social media because that helps also get near 80,000 subscribers. I want to get there soon. Uh, thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Toodaloo.